welcome to today's episode of Keys to the Market. I am your host, Ayana Hawkins with Simple Realty out in the Phoenix, Arizona market. Today, we are doing something special. We're talking to another agent that's also in the Phoenix market. But when we say Phoenix market, that means something completely different to different people. So we'll explain what we mean here in a second. Um, I want to introduce to you all Ms. Hope Harris. She is with RIPL Property in uh, the Phoenix area. I think you guys are based out of Tempe, though. Um, but tell us a little bit about yourself, what you bring to the table. I know you've been in the business almost 10 years, so congrats on that. And I'll let you take it from there. Well, thank you, for Ayana. This is a fabulous platform. So applause to you for getting this started and giving us this opportunity to kind of speak our truth um, on your platform. So as she stated, I, I've been licensed for 10 years. I am actually a Phoenix native, um, born and raised in Tempe. Um, I am a second generation Phoenix native. My father was also born here in Phoenix. So we have a long history um, here in Phoenix. My background, uh, kind of how I got into real estate is an interesting small story. Um, my background is in community service and social work. Oh, nice. And I was at um, in the Phoenix area, teen pregnancy prevention, those type of things, until I found out after 14 years, I was expecting again. Um, do it. So, <laughs> so me and my husband had to kind of strategize on how we were going to handle um, having a baby after so many years. And one of the things I needed to rethink was my time away from home and my mm -hmm. career. Um, my brother at that time had already been in real estate for 10 years, and he kind of recruited me and brought me in. He uh, wooed me with all of the things that he thought I was perfect, a perfect fit for real estate. And that basically I could take that same passion and community service that I had in my previous career and just kind of pivot it to people, um, buyers, getting them interested in buying homes and, and securing a, a, you know, financial wealth for their future. Um, so that's what I did. Um, and so I've been kind of trucking along ever since then. Awesome. Awesome. That is amazing. Appreciate it for sure. I love anybody that's in, in community service. Cause that's really, if you think of the bare bones, that's what we do. Like yeah. the, the service that we offer to the community, be it, you know, in the space that we are in real estate, that's the major piece of it. You got to have yeah. somewhere to live. Um, some people need somewhere to work. And then that turns into, you know, maybe I need an office space or, you know, a business is moving into town. So it all ties in together as much as we don't really pay it any mind. That's really the truth behind it all. It's kind of it all works together. Very much so. Very much so. So let's go ahead, dig into this conversation. You you're based out of Tempe personally, but what area is Queen Creek? Queen Creek is where my brokerage is based, but I live in Central Phoenix. Okay, so you you yeah. are kind of all over the place. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Well, let me ask you this question: Where would you prefer to <laughs> to, to kind of focus your clientele on? Like, are you East Valley? Are you kind to you know West Valley? Yeah. Are you all over the valley? How does that work for you? I would say that I'm all over the valley, but my um my the most amount of my clientele have come from Central Phoenix and West. Levine, Goodyear, Avondale, Tolleson, that area west um, has been a large majority of my clientele. But I do, I guess, again, just being a native from here, um, the entire valley is kind of familiar to me for that reason. For sure. So I'll ask yeah. you this question then. Haha, -ha. this is a question <laughs> we're going to put because we're going to cut this one out and show it to the world. If I were looking at a home in Queen Creek and I were looking yeah. at a home in Levine, What's one difference that I would see between the two? Um, I would say Levine is probably going to give you more accessibility to some of the major things in Phoenix that people downtown. Um, you're probably more like 20 minutes to downtown from Queen Creek. You're probably more like 30. Mm -hmm. um, so I think and from Levine, you also can do some street driving. Like you could take the streets and get from Levine to different parts of Phoenix Metro in Queen Creek, you're pretty much going to have to get on the interstate or get on the freeway to get into downtown Phoenix or to get to the West Valley. So just kind of, I would say, traffic fairways and that commute. Um, but outside of that, let's say you're a person who a lot of people are working remotely these days, you could work. I mean, Levine has everything to offer and so does Queen Creek. So if you're a person who doesn't have to leave your, your area um, on a frequent basis, you're going to find the same amenities, um, shopping, restaurants, all of those in both both areas, I would say. Okay, awesome. 
Now, am I going to find the same? Whereas I know in Queen Creek, a lot of the communities here, they're HOA based. Are they also HOA based in Levine as well? They are. Yeah, those um, those. Well, what we, we what we would consider those of who are from here, the newer parts of Phoenix, mm -hmm. Levine, Queen Creek are almost predominantly HOA driven. Um, the majority of your homes are going to be in planned communities with an HOA. Um, so if you're talking to someone who's set on that, that very much drives the areas that you're going to be looking for them uh, for the price point. But you are going to find, I would say what I'm seeing is Queen Creek, the um, cost is going up faster than Levine. Definitely. I can yeah. see that. That much yeah. I can attest to. I've seen that because um, when we first were um, comparing where we wanted to move here a few years ago, and East Valley versus West Valley, like generally speaking, the prices in the East Valley would definitely, I guess they were more driven by like the Chandler and the Gilberts and then everything yeah. else kind of trickled up from there. And then yes. in the West Valley, everything was kind of, for lack of a better term, affordable. Um, yes. When you got to like Levine, Avondale, Tolleson, Litchfield Park, you don't hear a whole lot about. Um, right. Surprise, Which still pretty good. Buckeye is surprising me because it looks to me, and I could be wrong, that their prices their prices are kind of starting to be neck and neck with Queen Creek a little bit. Yeah, um, and I was looking at so it's very interesting. They're both pretty rural, mm -hmm. um, pretty far out, but they're still attracting a lot of families, especially if you get people moving here from places like California where they're used to driving yeah. 45 minutes to an hour to get to downtown or to get to where they're going. They don't mind that drive. For sure. um, so they're looking at price point, which they're going to get more for their money in Buckeye and in Queen Creek. For sure. For sure. Yeah. All right. So are there any particular neighborhoods that your buyers are kind of drifting to in this particular market? Um. North North Phoenix has been kind of an attractive area. And I think that's because, um, so if you're not wanting an HOA and you're moving away from that, it's kind of hit and miss, but um, a certain pocket of my clientele definitely like the older uh, Central Phoenix type homes. Mm. But if you're in Central Phoenix, it's very expensive. I mean, you're gonna, you're talking, you know, north of 600,000 to get a regular single family home. Mm. Um, so the, a little further north, like off of Thunderbird, Cactus, still Phoenix, but you're getting those older homes, but at a more affordable price. I think um, things like HGTV have made it attractive to get mm -hmm. an older home, renovate the inside and do what you want to do on the inside. And so those who want to do that are finding better deals um, in that area than they are in the central Phoenix area. Interesting. That's pretty cool. And then those, t they tend to be smaller than what we see out this way though. Am I wrong? No, they do. They do. Definitely. Especially those secondary bedrooms. Oh, my goodness. Um, you can find sometimes where the, the master bedroom, the ensuite, as we call them, are not really ensuiting because they're, <laughs> they're not, it's like a typical little regular bathroom. So when they're looking at renovating, that's usually the first thing that I hear my buyers talking about. We're going to knock that wall and, mm. and make a bathroom or make an actual ensuite type of a bathroom versus just the typical you know, small ones that we had back in the day. For sure. And you get more yard. I will say that one thing yes. you will get, you may yes. get a teeny house, but you'll have a whole lot of yard to deal with. So you can always, you know, I guess, depending on regulations and zoning, make that house bigger, add some spaces to the back of it or whatever the case may be. Cause I think you'll have enough land to do it in those particular oh, yeah. areas. Whereas out That's this way, once that house is up, it's up. Ain't no adding to it. Cause you don't have a yard. That is a great point. That is a great point. Cause yeah, even in my neighborhood, the the average lot size is probably 9,000 square feet. Um, whereas I know in a lot of those planned communities and newer homes, it, they're 5,500 or 6,000 square feet yards. Mm -hmm. um, and they so that use you have, all of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they yeah, definitely for, use all of it. For sure. All right. So I'm going to ask you questions that um, I kind of know the answers to some of them. Okay. <laughs> But again, we're here to talk to your buyers, to your people. What builders are you seeing in Phoenix? Because um, I know out here in, so I'm in Florence, so I'm not far from you in Queen Creek, but I'm very familiar with Queen Creek, Santan Valley, East Mesa, all that fun stuff. So I know right now mm -hmm. they've got like their pick of builders out this way. Yeah. You've got your D.R. Hortons, you got your Taylor Morrisons, your um, uh, uh, Starlight Homes, you've got 
uh, da, 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 Richmond, American, everybody's pretty much over here because the land at some point was so inexpensive to where they yeah. were able to do what they wanted to do. Are, are we seeing those same builders in Phoenix, in the city of Phoenix, or what do we have over there? So if you're going, if you're willing to go in like Levine or Tolleson, you're going to see those same builders because similarly, they still have some open lots and some land that is buildable. Um, Phoenix Metro, not Phoenix Metro, but Phoenix proper, like if you're just talking about central Phoenix, very little land. Um, mm -hmm. So where there are land, it's usually an area where some older homes have been leveled and they're building on. So you're going to get your custom builders um you're gonna get occasionally like some of the high end um what is it toll brothers yeah um so you're gonna get some of those but those dr hortons those fulton homes those richmond homes they're not um commonly in phoenix okay for sure but i am seeing a lot of um what we're seeing now and i don't know what triggered the switch but we're seeing the bill to rent and i know i'm seemingly seeing those yeah. in like every other corner when I yes. do go into the Phoenix and Glendale areas. So that is an interesting um, phenomenon, for lack of a better term, uh, yeah. that we're seeing now is now you have literally, we're building houses just for you to rent them out. You're not even yeah. given the option to purchase, maybe later down the road, that's the plan. I'm hoping that's the plan, but then yeah. again, maybe not, because I've seen those homes and they look teeny. Um, they look rentable. <laughs> I think the objective for those investors is strictly rental income. So I think you're right that in those areas, um, and there's pros and cons to that because we're not in denial that there's some people that are not ready um, to buy and they should have a very nice, if they if they can afford the rent, they should have a nice home to be able to rent as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it does make you complacent. It does make you think that you're buying, that you're in your dream home. Um, and I even saw a situation, and you've seen this too, where they rent, they can't really afford to buy what they rent. So they end up not buying because they don't, they feel like it's a step backwards mm -hmm. to go forward. And we're trying to encourage them and understand you're looking at the long term. You're not looking at right now, but they get stuck in, well, I, I just came from a house that has all these amenities. And now you want me to go into a starter home as a buyer. Yes, that's what we need yeah. to do. But I'm, I'm saying <laughs> that's what we want you to do. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm sorry. Yep. Or you can move out here to Florence with me and then you get what you want. For the <laughs> True. I mean, <laughs> Florence, when I was growing up, was never even heard of. But yeah. now Florence has got everything that you would need. So no problem. No issue. Right. For sure. I mean, we can get to what we need. I'm going to put it that way. We still working yeah. on getting everything in floors, but you can get to what you need fairly easily if you know where to look. So I'll put it that way. I don't want to just lead people to thinking, hey, we got everything. No, we don't. We right. really don't. I can't get a Dollar Tree to save my life in Florence right now. And I would really like one. I'm like, just saying. I'm sure. <laughs> sure. Now in Phoenix, in Tempe also, they have uh, an eclectic mixture of home options, meaning you can get a single family home, but you can also buy a condo or a townhouse. Um, are your buyers still kind of aiming themselves more towards the single family homes? Are they considering condos and fees? Because I know the the fees tend to be a little bit outrageous for those yeah. monthly fees for those uh, condos up in Phoenix. So that's, that's kind of the problem um, is those HOA fees are so high that you're really you can end up paying more for a condo or a townhouse than you would pay for single family homes. But um, that additional layer of the yard maintenance is sometimes attractive. So it depends on kind of the space and life that this buyer is in. I've had a couple that they don't really care how much more it costs. They don't want the responsibility of a single family home at all because they don't mm. want the yard. They don't want it. If they go out of town, they don't want to have to worry about what's going on with their house where you don't have those same concerns um, in a, you know, in a condo or, or an HOA or a townhome community. Um, but if, you know, those people that want, uh, that have children particularly are looking for an environment for a child. So they want a yard, they want a child across the street that they can play with. They want the neighborhood, they want the neighborhood school, which typically, you don't get those, you know, in your in your condo, your HOA community. So I think it just um, we're going to see more of that for those mo millennials, probably. 
Um, but I think those who have families are going to still be focused on single family homes. At least that's my my guess. That makes sense. It definitely would make sense. Um, trends. So we've seen some crazy stuff happen in the last 12 months in real estate from yes. high interest rates to two one buy downs to at one point a couple of years ago, we had the multiple offers going on. So we're seeing all this crazy starting to level off. But now we're like aiming, gaming up for the next level of real estate, which we don't know what it's going to be at this point. What are you kind of right. saying? Are your buyers able to get assistance from sellers um, right now? Are they still getting that help that, you know, to help buy down rates or to help pay their closing costs? Are, are they coming in asking to pay more for the home that they want? What are your buyers seeing right now? Yeah, so definitely um, they are still able to get some concessions from sellers. Um, they're asking because we still have houses that are sitting for a while, mm -hmm. at least in the areas where my buyers are, are interested in buying or the affordable areas that they can buy. I know those higher end luxury markets have, have been um, never really saw that that uh, slow down. Um, but in the the regular, you know, regular family, probably 500,000 or less, you're still having families. Um, that are looking for the houses that have been sitting on the market for 30 plus days. So yes, they are still getting concessions, um, which has been great for the buyers. But as those interest rates drop and more buyers are jumping back into the market, that's probably going to be fewer and fewer and far between. Um, so just, just trying to encourage those buyers to make a move. If, yeah. if you're wanting to move, this is the time that even though it's still a seller's market, you got a little bit of leverage right now. Um, but that may not sustain um, I saw a clip for um, somewhere in L.A. area, L.A. County, that they're already back into bidding wars. There was like uh, 15 people lined upside the house waiting for their showing. Oh. Um, so it was reminiscent of what was that 2020 when we were in that same stage. So we're usually a little bit behind California with trends and that kind of thing. So I'm curious to see if we're going to be moving back into that direction as the rates um, continue to decline. For sure. Are you seeing more? Because I only typically, the only time I'm looking in like and staying abreast with what's going on in those different markets is when I have buyers in those markets. So right. when I don't, I focus on, you know, where I generally live, you know, out here in Florence, out Santan Valley. Um, sure. How's the inventory looking for the areas where your buyers are, your their central Phoenix, how's the inventory looking right now? Are we seeing more listings come? Um, or it's, they just, so. No, it's still a, it's still pretty low inventory. Um, so that's that's. I mean, I think that's what's really holding, sustaining that seller's market type of a vibe is that there's just not a whole lot out there. Um, but again, I think as sellers see buyers coming back into the market. Um, they will also be, I'm sorry, there's something happening with my screen. Um, as, as buyers are jumping back into the market, sellers are going to say, hey, this is the time. I've got a couple of sellers that have been like on the fence um, as whether they should put their house on the market or not, just waiting. But now that the rates are going down, mm -hmm. they're really looking like, okay, this is probably a good time to go ahead and do it. Um, so the inventory is low, but we're hoping, I'm hoping that with the rates coming down, more people will be ready to pull the trigger because most people that are selling got to buy something too. True. So it's like, well, you know, they're like, do I want to sell? Cause then I got to buy. Um, so then they're waiting for that all to line up. For sure. Now you've been in the business, like I said, almost 10 years now. So generally yeah. speaking, this time of year in this market is absolutely yeah. slow, strangely enough. So this is not abnormal for this time right. of year. Just January. Yeah. February is when we start to see, um, an increase. And I, and I I don't know if that's because people are thinking about um, their changes for the summer, like as school wraps up, they want to be already the new district. I'm not sure kind of what I think this is just the time. I think it's weather. I think it's um, you get a lot of people coming to Phoenix for different events in the spring. So I think all of those things kind of, you know, people come for a, a golf tournament and say, hey, I want to buy a, an investment property here in Phoenix. I mean, I think that's what happens. So yeah, okay. January's slow, but by February, we'll probably see some pretty good traction. For sure. 
All right. What kind of buyers are you working with right now? Are you working with mostly first time buyers? Are you working with those ones that are they they've had that first home and now they're ready to move up uh, the snowbirds? Um, who are you working with right now? I have a first time buyer, um, which is actually that's my thing. That's my vibe. I love the educational part of it. Um, I love that person who is um, anxious for information and who's excited about the buying process. They're still um, in love with the whole process. Um, I also have an investor who um, this is probably their 10th or 12th home here in Phoenix. So mm -hmm. they're pretty seasoned, um, but are looking for the deal. So you kind of have a good mixture of those who are very seasoned, which to the degree that it kind of uh, has it makes them hesitate because they're looking for that. They think they got they're going to get that best deal or that's too high or you know that they're very negotiative. Whereas you have the first time buyer who's just like, please teach me, who show me what I need to do. Um, so probably both extremes right now. Oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, Phoenix, Tempe. Gilbert, all these places are different. They are very yes. different from one another. But they're yeah. all, to us, they're all the same. You know what I mean? Like, we are more apt to, if a, if a client comes our way and they want to buy a house in Peoria, yeah, we know about Peoria. It's a very different vibe from, like, other markets, whereas you have one city that you focus on and maybe there's different parts of town. We literally have different cities. Yes. In the market. So it's so hard to really explain to people what that means until you yeah. come here and you realize, yeah, this this place is a whole lot of lot. That's the only way I can explain that. You're from here, so you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> There's a yeah. whole lot a lot going on in the Phoenix metro area. What are some misconceptions about Phoenix? One misconception, generally speaking, about Phoenix that you can clear up for people really quick. Um, um Misconception about I I think it 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 depends a lot on where people are from. Mm -hmm. um, so I lived in Virginia for a little while. When I first moved out there, people thought the desert meant that Phoenix was real country. Like they were they they literally thought that they didn't understand that Phoenix is like the fifth largest city in the country. Like they didn't understand the magnitude of Phoenix. Um, I think more now people get that it's a big city because of Super Bowls and different things that have happened here that have brought it in the limelight. But I think the biggest, um, maybe the biggest misconception is that it's a, a very um, like low cost or affordable city. That part. Um, <laughs> that part right and, there. and it's not that anymore. Mm -hmm. it's, it, again, when I was growing up here, when I was here, you know, in the 70s and maybe even into the 80s, it was probably still considered affordable. But in recent years, it's definitely no longer. Um, it, it's creeping up to a lot of those very high, um, maybe not at the point where California is, but it's definitely um, making you pause when you're, you know, thinking through affordability for Phoenix. For sure. I think the one thing that I thought that I only thought was it was hot. That's the only thing you're taught is that it's hot in Arizona. That's all you yeah. know is it's hot. But the truth of the matter is coming from Florida to the desert, you know, here in Arizona, no, it's it's hot. Don't get me wrong. But there's ways around the heat here. Whereas wow. to me, ain't no way around the heat in Florida because it's hot and it's humid. Humid. And those two things combined make for a miserable experience all year mm -hmm. long. Whereas yeah. here, you guys, I never heard of a haboo. I didn't know what a monsoon was until we moved out here. And I'm like, a monsoon is really not that bad. Like, yeah. like people yeah. have you thinking that it's horrible. And I'm like, no, it's really just a mini hurricane, just kind of right in one little spot for yep. about 10 minutes. And then it goes away. Now, I will yep. say the dust storms, that caught me off guard. I, I did not expect to go through as many of those as we've gone through since we've been here. And then those little things, what they call them? Dust devils. Dust devils. Yeah. Dust devils. I don't know what I just said, but the <laughs> dust devils. Yes. Like, those are really mini tornadoes. Nobody They're, tells you that. Yeah. <laughs> so that was cool to me. I love seeing them. I just hope they go the opposite direction, but that was kind of cool. So I think that was the misconception for me 
was coming out here thinking, oh, it's going to be hot all the time. And yeah. I'll be loving the winter weather here. And even the summer I can function in at this point. Yeah. Just You don't ride around with your windows down in the summertime. That's pretty much how that works. Right. It's it's shade management. I mean, you managing managing your shade and all of that. But similar to you, my husband's from Virginia. And when we first moved back here, he was kind of like, I mean, it's hot, but I would take this for these couple months any day over mm -hmm. what we have to deal with in Virginia. Humidity, um, cold winters. Yep. So cold I think wet it, winters. Yes. Yes. No. So I would agree with you that weather is definitely a misconception because people just think oh my God, how can you handle the heat? Um, and then you spend one year here and you're like, wait a minute, I can do this. This is very doable. Definitely so. I just learned to find, like you said, shade management. I like that. I'm going to have to pick that one up. I learned if you're under a tree, it's not that bad. And if the wind is blowing, which it typically is out here, as long as there's a breeze, the I movement. can deal with the sun. Those two yep. things I'm fine with. So I'm good. I actually really do enjoy it here. And it's just, it's become, it's our second home now. Florida was our home for a very long time, but now it's like we can see ourselves as this is home. We've been here almost five years now. And it's like you wake up, there's nothing's the same every day. You can, the same mountain that you look at every single day is going to look different, different. every single day. And that yeah. is just, I don't know how people, I, I didn't realize what I didn't know. I thought the beach was life, but now I'm like, I love a good mountain. Oh, I really do love a good mountain. I, I can drive to the when I need to and uh, call it. We got sure. California and plenty of beaches there. So, absolutely. No problem. Well, are there, do you have any um, events that are coming up pretty soon that you're looking to uh, tell the, the viewers about? Yeah. So, I'm going to be um, one among a couple of vendors at a, an event at Grassroots Bookstore, which is in Central Phoenix, and it is a Black History Month event. Um, and there's gonna be vendors, there's gonna be entertainment, gonna be some speakers. Um, and I did this event last year and it was a great opportunity to be visible and to talk to um, a lot of families about home ownership. So that's what I will continue to do. And it's right before um, Home Ownership Week, uh, Black, Home Ownership Week. Are you familiar with that week? Yeah. I am not, actually. I know about Home Ownership Month um, in National Home Ownership Month in June, but I didn't know there was a week dedicated to it. So about two years ago, um, kind of a movement of some different um, uh, Black real estate organizations, they started a Black, real, Black Home Ownership Week, um, and it's February 18th through the 25th this year. Nice. Um, so it's always during Black History Month, but it's kind of moves the week. So um, during that same time, they're having a Black History Month event at a bookstore in Central Phoenix called Grassroots Bookstore. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to be having a table there. So that's one of the events to do. Again, I love I love that community interaction. I guess that's the community service part of me that still has that passion, um, answering questions, chatting it up with people I love to do. So I have that upcoming event. Absolutely. We will make sure we get the word out to everybody that is joining us so that they know when and where to come and see you at that event. Um, is there anything that you'd like to leave the viewers with, be it a nugget of knowledge or just something you want them to know about you? Is there anything in particular that you want to leave them with today? Um, I think my nugget of knowledge would just be that there's um, home ownership is for everybody. I hear people say that, you know, that's not for me or I don't think I'm the right person or I don't know if I'm going to stay in Phoenix long term or I don't know if I want what area in Phoenix I want to live. You have to really look at home ownership as um, investment, growing your family, creating wealth. Um, five years from now, if you move, you've still got a property that you can leverage to do so many things for yourself. So just really um, it's a cultural, it's a mind shift. It mm -hmm. really is just getting in the mindset of home ownership versus renting. And I find that when people realize that they can buy, they see, they understand, they've had in their mind all this time that they can't, like, it's not for me. Like nobody in my family's ever owned a home. So I just didn't think I could. Um, but just that message that bottom line, home ownership is for everyone um, and everybody at some point with a little bit of work is capable of being a homeowner. There you go. That's the tagline. Home ownership is for everyone. I love that. But thank yeah. you so much for taking time out of your schedule 
to talk to myself and talk to everybody that is watching us today and tomorrow and whenever they're watching this. If you guys are looking for an amazing agent who knows the Valley, who is very familiar with Tempe, maybe you've got children that are getting ready to go to ASU and you need somebody to take good care of them. There she is. This is Miss Hope Harris. And um, again, my name is Ayanna Hawkins with Simple Realty. Thanks, you guys, for joining us. We will see you next time. Bye. Thanks.